ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Irrational Confidence Podcast. We're talking with a living legend, an NBA Hall of Famer, a slam dunk champion, a multiple time All Star, a man that is all NBA. Guys, we're interviewing the legendary Dominique Wilkins. I'm joined by my co-host, Fresh. Fresh, how you doing? Perhaps this is a special, special night. We are in the midst of a legend. Truly privileged to have this opportunity to speak with Dominique and um, learn about all of his experience in basketball, but even more, more so, everything he's doing in the community now and throughout his entire life. This is just a great honor, and we're really privileged to be here tonight. Dominique, welcome. Welcome on. I mean... This is unbelievable. I still cannot believe I'm actually getting a chance to talk to you today. Yeah. Well, thanks for having me, guys. Uh, look forward to this conversation here. So thanks for having me on. Yeah, absolutely. So just so a lot of people know, what have you ever since finished playing in the NBA? What have yeah. you been up to? Uh, quite a few things since I've stopped playing. You know, I kind of, before I retired, tried to put together some things in my mind, my head, things I worked on over the years before I retired. And so when, when I retired, I knew I was going to go right into the front office with the Atlanta Hawks. And that was me was kind of a dream come true. I always wanted to, to stay with the organization once I retired. And I've been there ever since. But, you know, basketball was one thing. Healthcare uh, is a, something that became a calling for me instead of just something that I did to help people. It was actually a calling and particularly in diabetes and hypertension and now um, autism space. Now um, being with a, a foundation named Culture City has helped change my life the way I look at things. Because, you know, having two kids on the spectrum, I know all too well what people go through every day uh, dealing with their kids and loved ones who are suffering from these uh, hidden disabilities, visible disabilities, PTSD, all these different things that that affect your life we try to give people help healthy options. And that's one of the things that that's I'm most passionate about. You know, basketball is always going to be a part of my life. Atlanta Hawks is always going to be a part of my life. But you know, when you can get things outside of that to bring you peace and bring you some sense of belongingness, that that's what I was looking forward to. And it transcends to even more things. Um, I um, have my own uh, home design company called Neek Home that – we have a, a great product, high-end product for people to get value prices in, in this space. So uh, that's another passion of mine because I grew up around it with my mom and grandma who was interior, into it, interior design. So that's another passion that we've kind of picked up, you know, recently. That's absolutely awesome. Absolutely incredible. So we got to talk a little bit of hoops with you. Oh, no, no problem. Absolutely. You can't, can't talk yeah, to Dominique yeah, Wilkins without, without talking, talking basketball. I get it. No problem. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just I'm just curious. When you watch today's game, and especially this year with – this will be the sixth season in a row where we haven't had a repeat NBA champion. And that hasn't happened since the 75 to 81 season. You have parity throughout the NBA. What are your thoughts on the current state of the NBA well, I, I, where the game is caught to? Well, I think it is. You just said I think it's more parity. Um, it's not just the West dominating, you know, right now like they've done in recent years. Now you have the Eastern Conference who've put together some really, really good teams. And right now Boston has been unstoppable. And I think it's going to come down to Boston and, and Dallas where it looks like right now. Well, one of the other main parts of your entire career was just being a two-time dunk champion. And in my opinion, three-time dunk champion. Actually, there's a little four, controversy there in Chicago. Two. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> what was it like being part of that spectacle event and having some of the most talented athletes in the world on the court and just showing off tr truly unique abilities? I, I tell you the difference then and now is that back then we wanted to know who the best was. Simple mm. as that. And we enjoy – putting on a show for the fans. The greatest athletes in the league were in that dunk contest. And then a lot of, you know, a lot of times, you know, you know people think by getting a dunk contest, if you lose that, it's going to screw with your legacy. And it doesn't. The fact that they still are talking about 33, 34 years later lets you know that it was a special event and a special time and two of the greatest athletes competed uh, each year. So, it was just a different time, but um, I think it's so many different distractions for guys now. You got, they got a lot going on, man. 
you know, and so I don't hold anything against anybody. You know, it's it's what you feel, what you want to do as a player, and that's that's that individual to make that decision. But you know, the funny thing is when people, when you see highlights of me, you see what you see, Sam, slam dunk, high wire act. People don't realize I scored over 26,000 points and I didn't get them mm-hmm. all on dunks. I was a creative mm-hmm. scorer inside, outside, three pointer, getting to the th- uh, free throw line, posting up. I mean, it, I scored in so many different ways, but sometimes, it, or most times, it get overlooked because of your athletic uh, ability. Yeah. I got to ask this because I've always wanted to know this question. And I grew up watching – I had the, one of those old videotapes when I was a kid where they had, like, the, the highlights of the seasons and the dazzling dunks and basketball bloopers thing. How do you prepare for a dunk contest? Do you go in and do you, like, I might do this, I might wing it, or do you have, like, a plan in place? I've never planned anything that I've done in dunk Really? Not once. Never practiced in a gym before a dunk contest. None. None of that. Because all the dunks I did in the dunk contest, I was doing in games. So it was – it was game time oh. dunks in a dunk contest. I never practiced on that stuff, and neither did Michael when he did. We did stuff that we were doing in the games. That that's incredible. Like it just blows my mind that that yeah. that's just off. Yeah. When, like, I, when, I, when, I, when cool. I hear guys go and find you know a private gym and you know everything's a secret and they do that and practice all these different things, we never did none of that, not once. Wow. You know, just straight I, mean, I can speak, for, I can speak for Michael. I can speak for Dr. J and David Thompson, guys like that in the past, and the Sean Kemp's of the world, and all these. We never, we never worked on that stuff in private. So, you said something about in your generation, wait, when you played the game, that it was always about finding out who is the best, and we just came up on that. We just passed the anniversary of maybe I would argue one of the greatest Game 7s in the Eastern Conference Finals versus you and the li- our living legend, Larry Bird. Well, you had two great teams. You all, did. And you had two guys that matched each other's will, that did not want to leave and go home for the summer. And mm-hmm. it, it, what set that game up was Game 6 when we lost. We should have won that series in 6. Mm-hmm. And Larry Bird said, you know, Atlanta blew the opportunity. I'm guaranteeing them win. And I remember before I came on the floor, we were coming out of the locker room. I said, we're going to win this bleep bleep game. If you ain't ready to fight, you ain't ready to go to war, don't come out. Whoever guarding me tonight going to have a long night. <laughs> Unfortunately, Larry Bird was telling his guys the same thing down the other end. Yeah. <laughs> so it set up for one of the greatest shootouts ever. It, it really was. And I, as I was looking through researching this, you going for 47, Larry going for 34. He only and- had 12 in going into the fourth quarter. Right. <laughs> you know? Now, I, I I take they made a defensive adjustment. And you went off of Larry then as well. He got hot. Right, exactly. Hot. That's, that's the only and way I explanation for it. I remember the coach said, Nick, go in there and stop him. I'm going to stop him. He hot. <laughs> I can't stop him. I said, the only thing I can do is try to match him bucket for bucket. But it ain't no stopping Larry Bird when he gets to that point. Yeah. Man, that it. I went back and I watched. I, I was watching a bunch of that, and just such, such an incredible game that I think a lot of kids these days like they'll hear about Bird versus Magic or you know the Bad Boy Pistons or whatever have you, and and you that one game I just was blown away with you what know I was what? seeing. Larry and I and we and we've talked over the years because we're no longer competitors, so he's a really good friend. I got a lot of always had a lot of respect for Larry, but mm-hmm. you know. We've had some of the greatest games, individual games against one another, probably in, in one of the, the biggest rivals in the history of the game, some of the games we've had against one another. I mean, he's had a 60-point game. I've had a 54-point game. He's had a 50 game. I've had 49. I mean, it's, it's been, it was like that for quite some time. And so, you know, he was one of the guys that brought out the best in me. He was mm-hmm. something else. People, I'm telling you, these kids today have no idea, no idea how good Larry Bird was. Right. No. No way. Well, I think we'll both tell you right now that basketball in the 80s and 90s so much better than it is right now. It's great now, but the, the talent, the competitiveness of all the different and players think you, across the league was just epic. And I think you're right, the competitiveness. I mean, you look at the small forward position back when I was. Mm-hmm. 
I got Bird at 6'10", one night Hall of Famer. I got Dr. J, 6'8", one night Hall of Famer. I got English, Dantley, Worth, uh, uh, Bernard King, you know, every single, Mark Aguirre, every night. <laughs> I mean, everybody that averages over 25. Right, you know, everyone's battling the lane. You know, it's it was a lot more contact, but it was just really you know, truly it was, it was it was banging, it was it was tenacity. But the thing is that the physicality didn't bother us because you know we were built for it. That's what our bodies was trained to endure. So it wasn't mm-hmm. a big deal to play under that kind of pressure. Is there a player in today's NBA that you could you could look at and go? That guy is kind of a throwback to that. Well, that well age. there's quite a few guys. This is the way. Okay. You got to give LeBron a lot of credit, man, to do what he's done oh. for 20 years. Mm-hmm. 20 years? Yep. I mean, that's incredible. But there's a lot of guys that I can look and say, you know, he's a throwback type of player. You look at Embiid at the center. Mm. Look at Jokic. But Jokic definitely adds a little something different because he could shoot the ball from the perimeter. And he can make threes. Um, but, you know, guys like that is definitely throw black players, you know. And now you look at guys now, and I tell you the two the guys that I really like, uh, like watching the players, is Kyrie and Luka Dantes. The watching mm-hmm. together, oh, how God. they have come together as a unit, mm-hmm. they got no answer for them guys. If you stop one, you mm-hmm. can't stop the other. And so it's, 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 it's rivalries like that that I enjoy. Now you see the young Ant Man who's coming up mm-hmm. you know? mm-hmm. and um, you look, you look at what, you know, guys like Durant and Steph Curry and Draymond, all them guys who've done on their respective teams to win, man, it's mm-hmm. a thing of beauty. It's just incredible. Well, it's funny that you man, mentioned that, man. I'm a George Bulldog fan. You're obviously a Georgia legend. Um, what was it like stepping on campus in Athens there for Coach Durham and, and starting out and getting that and building the foundation there for Georgia basketball eventually well, to get I from the tournament to go to Georgia left. with four, four or five other high school All-Americans at that time. And we decided to go there together. And that was a total football school when we went there. But it quickly turned and not going to a tournament since 1934. And we went to a tournament the first year we were there. And so that was, that was a big stepping stone for that school. And, you know, in Georgia – will always have a place in my life and my heart because it was a great time for me, and especially in the time where you didn't leave the ACC. If you was a great player in those days, you didn't leave the ACC. And I was kind of the first one, that, like great players to actually leave uh, the ACC. It didn't go over well, <laughs> but the University of Georgia was there and really took care of me and my family. And man, and I still have that same love and support today that I had back then. What was it for you grew up in North Carolina, right there, Duke and UNC, iconic programs. What made you choose a school like I Georgia over there? I let them intent with North Carolina State at that time with me, Thurl Bailey, Wittenberg, and Law, all of us was going to school together. With, you know. With mm-hmm. Salvano. Yes. Yeah. And at the last minute I changed my mind and went to Georgia. Uh I know Sydney Lowe and um uh and those guys, they weren't happy. I they thought I was coming with them, but <laughs> Yeah, that was tough to get out of that state, you know, and I got ran out of the state when I made that decision. Okay, I, I got to ask, because he's one of my favorite personalities of all time, is is Jim Valvano. What was it like being recruited by, Man, Jim by, was, by yeah, him? Jim was great. I knew Jim when I was in 11th grade, you know, uh, uh-huh. and, and knew him as a coach, as a person. And even when I came in the NBA, he did a couple of uh, roasts here in Atlanta, uh you know, at one of our events. And so I got a chance to really know Bob Van is a wonderful guy. And um, he's still missed to this day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it, it was he's an he's an icon and inspiration for, you know, no, he wasn't. A good, think he was and that's a great coach. He was a great person, yeah. man. He was energy, high octane, funny. Oh, I mean, he was a he was a comedian, you know, he coached <laughs> the game of basketball. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just I just love stories like uh, about people like that who have something such great, you know, someone's been gone for 20 plus years now, yeah. but has such nice things to say about it because it kind of reinforces he did, he what you think of a person. He did a lot for the game of basketball. And that's one of the rare coaches that players followed, you know, mm-hmm. no matter mm-hmm. how tough it got, you know, he was the leader and you followed that. And that's what made him so great. Mm-hmm. So keep, 
kind of blending between the NBA and college basketball, being in the front office and being a representative of the Hawks, what do you, what's the game looking like? What are, what are development of players? Where are you guys addressing from a college game transition to the NBA? What are you, what qualities is, are they looking for? Well, the thing is you want to, you want to have pieces to your team that's going to bring you value. I mean, of course, you're going to have guys that you develop. That's what the NBA is about, is bringing them young guys. If you happen to develop sooner than other young guys that come in same time you do, um, that's a plus. And, again, you look at a guy like Ant-Man who came right in the NBA making an impact his first year. You know, those guys are rare. And now you see what Wemby has done his first year in the league. Could have very easily been defensive player of the year. I mean, this is a well-rounded young man, and all he's going to do is get better and better. So um, and the, the, the thing that you want, you want to build chemistry with your team. Mm-hmm. You know, everybody has to be on one accord if you're going to win big in this league. It's awesome. That's sports in general right there. That's a great approach of finding, you know, key role players to help blend with that, that entire squad. You can't win without, and guys you, knowing how to contribute. You can't win without great role players. Everybody understanding their responsibility on a team. And even if you don't win, and you have teams that compete every year to at least make it competitive where fans respect, your team respect, your organization respect. So you can ask for a lot of time. Then you hope you can build from that to get to that uh, championship point. So, But it takes time. You know? And, again, you got to be a little lucky as well as good. Mm-hmm. Right. Totally agree so, with that. So let me ask – I got to ask you this. If you were playing in today's age, you scored 26,000, I have no doubt in my mind 30,000 would have easily in today's rules. Where do you think you would have, what do you think you would have been averaging if you're playing in the I NBA? I could have played in those rules because I like physical contact. I right. Mean, I don't know, but it would have been more than 35 a game. I tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you that. Yeah. yeah. For sure. I am. I, I just kind of think like, again, you look back at some of these guys that, came and, and you talk about, you know, if you would have put him in this day and age and, and again, I, I'm with you. I got the opportunity to see LeBron at 17 years old. I grew up in Ohio um, and seeing him that young and seeing how great he would be. And he, he was always the one player when I saw him, I said, you know, this guy would have been successful. No oh, yeah. when I mean, he played, he's, great. But he's a great player. You know, coming out of high, same with you. Crane thing. coming out of high school, we, we got voted years ago at the greatest senior class in history coming out of high school across the country. The class of really? 79. Oh, yeah. You can go back and look. Mm-hmm. Arguably the greatest senior class ever. Not one guy went to pros out of high school. Wow. And I averaged, I averaged uh, 30 and 16 coming out of high school. Didn't think about going to pros. Wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Who, who's all in your class of 79? Ralph Sampson, Sam Bowie, I, Thomas Clark Kellogg, uh, uh, Antoine Carr, mm-hmm. Cliff Livingston. Darren Day, Raymond McCoy. It's, it's so many. Thurl Bay. It's a, it's a it's list. It's it is a list. Many. It's too it's it's too many guys. Terry Cummings, Steve Tapanovich. Uh, wow. I can man, that's only a name of few. Wow. That played in the NBA that same time. That's Quentin awesome. Daly, who was who was a freak of nature. He would mm-hmm. come off the Chicago Bulls bench and, and had 30, 32 off the bench. Mm-hmm. Was, I mean, we had some incredible, incredible players in those days. Absolutely. Well, I want to circle back because you said that you got a brand new venture, Neek Homes. Mm-hmm. Neekhome.com right. is a brand new website. Launched this. You said your mom and grandmother were into interior design. They were unbelievable <laughs> interior design designers. And they didn't want us to sit on their living room couches and stuff because everything had its place so you know mm-hmm. you had to ask permission <laughs> to sit mm-hmm. years. but it kind of carried over with my mother who kind of got me involved in decorating early on because i always decorated mm-hmm. my own house i never hired wow. a decorator i did it myself mm-hmm. even from putting up the blinds to picking the color schemes all of that and so now we've launched our our own uh design company called neek homes they're dealing with Mm-hmm. Every aspect of a home from flooring to cabinets to faucets, you name it, we do it. That's awesome. So we're going to see you on HGTV, new reality show? We, we, we're working <laughs> on that. We're working on it. And, and the thing that we want people to understand that you're going to get the highest quality of products at, That's awesome. at a valued price that you're going to be mm-hmm. happy with. 
Right. And is it based solely out of the Atlanta area? Is well, it something that people can get over. nationwide? We're going to be all, going all okay. over, all over the country. Awesome. That's absolutely yes. incredible. Well, in addition to that amazing adventure, um, you mentioned you were involved with diabetes and then also um, culturecity.org. Tell us how to everyone how to get involved with these different organizations you were involved well, with and the well, impact that you're having across the country. If you go on, go on that website, you see everything we do, uh, the people who was involved in, in, in the very, very big, diverse uh, board that we have. And um, we've done so much great stuff, not just in the United States, but around the world. And so that's one of my biggest focus in life as far as um, finding healthy solutions for people who can't help themselves or need assistance with. So that for me is one of the things that's near and dear to my heart. And of course, um, basketball speaks for itself. I mean, we don't even have to talk about it. Everybody know what Atlanta right. Hawks mean to me, but also now this new venture with um, uh, Nick home is, uh, is it's, it's a, it's a game changer for us. Mm -hmm. And so we're very proud of it. I think it's just a, it's a sign that you see sometimes see athletes where they think, what am I going to do now? And either it's causes, it is other business ventures, but being a chance to have careers outside of that, that sport is, is really, yeah. you, know, you know, the thing that's really, really um, impressive and great for me is to see how current players today has become corporations have built their own brands where when it's all over with, that ha they have something that they're proud of or something that's making a difference in this world. So it's really cool how they develop their own brands and corporations themselves. I 100% agree. It's fantastic. I mean, giving back and using that platform to really deliver and, yes. and bring change yes. in a positive Absolutely. way. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, we want to thank you so much for taking just a little bit of time out of your day. Everyone, if, if you haven't get a chance, culturecity.org neekhome.com definitely check out every great thing that dominique wilkins is doing it this has just been incredible yeah, just to subscribe to our page, we appreciate it and guys thanks for having me on i really appreciate it sir, it's an honor it, sir truly a privilege and thank you so much for right. everything you guys be good all right you as well take care sir have a great one sir all right, bye. thank you all right ladies and gentlemen you've been listening to another episode of the irrational confidence podcast Please make sure you check out SpinnableSports.com. I want to send a special thank you to Dominique Wilkins for joining us. Absolutely incredible interview with him. And make sure you follow us on social media, on Twitter, on the X, everywhere you get it. Like, subscribe, wherever you get your podcasts from. And make sure you leave us that five-star review because you guys know Fresh and I, we are those five-star prospects. Such an incredible interview there, Fresh. I still can't believe that we got a chance to talk to Dominique Wilkins. And you can definitely tell, special man, not just an amazing athlete, just a special person who's doing a lot of great things on and off the court in, in basketball and outside. And that's just uh, something I think we all should aspire to. And it's really just a privilege and honor to me to meet and talk to a man of, of that caliber. And, you know, it's a, it's really cool. And I hope that everybody's a chance to really spread the word and be involved in all the different things that he is, because that's going to be another way to help layer on and give back. Yeah. Make sure you check out the websites. We left them in the comments in the descriptions below. Check them out. It's been awesome, guys, but we will catch you just down the road. And thank you again for listening to another episode of the Irrational Confidence Podcast. Special thanks to our producer, Drew. Without him, none of this is possible. And make sure you're checking out SpinnableSports.com. And with that, bye, y'all.